Okay, he's going to read you. I don't know. Should we do an introduction? You want to go first, Pat? Do you want to introduce? Uh, yeah, sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Patrick. Uh, I am a producer on Need for Speed. I've been making your beloved Need for Speed for about 10 years. So, yeah, lots of Need for Speed stuff to talk about. Uh, James, you back? I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah. There we go. All it was is, you know, turn it off and on again. Do your intro. Let John do his intro now, though, because we started. Oh, yeah. Out, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I had I heard everything. It was just you couldn't hear me. That was it. So. And look, I can focus on you now, John. So you got the center stage. Oh, amazing. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm John, creative director on Need for Speed. Been with Criterion for oh, just about coming up 12 years. Uh, worked on many Need for Speeds in my time, uh, as well as some other stuff, as well on things like Battlefront and VR and Firestorm and all sorts. Um, yeah, it's a hell of a ride and looking forward to actually pushing forward on Need for Speed and speaking to all awesome. you guys. Yeah, we've had some really cool uh, and varied questions in uh, on the reddit post there's been a lot uh, we probably should have put a few more rules in when it came to uh when it came to actually the the questions User. that we were asking because there was a well the usernames as well yeah but uh that's not our fault that's a reddit fault um so um but yeah there was some interesting usernames but also a lot of questions and i think that just shows just how committed this community is um and how exciting it is so uh yeah, but um, but yeah, just to, obviously, I know you guys have just introduced yourself, but just to kind of say thank you very much, everyone, for, for joining us. We have over 250 people in the audience, which is really, really cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think we can have up to maybe 600 people in here. I don't think we'll, we'll reach quite that many people, but um, yeah, we'll have this. This will be a fun, fun time here. Um, and um, yeah, and thank you, everyone who has submitted a question into the, uh, the Reddit post as well. Um, unfortunately, we won't be able to take any questions from the chat, which um, uh, Club Sport has very uh, kindly uh, put a note in the chat to do. Um, unfortunately, we can't pin that, but maybe he'll post that once in a while uh, just to remind people. But um, yeah, obviously, we had a lot of questions come in and we're so sorry if we can't get your question to either John or Pat. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll do our best to go through kind of as many as possible. And obviously, the questions are going to be around year two, which is kaizen uh that's the the philosophy for the second year of live service for need for speed unbound so um yeah lots lots uh, lots to dive into and uh, do you know what with this being our first time let us know how it's gone and uh whether we should do this again anything you change as well maybe um me fixing my mic at the start is one thing that we could change uh, you know just to, to kick things off but i tell you what we'll, we'll jump we'll jump straight into the first questions because um we obviously don't have loads of time but um, I think this one's uh, going to be taken by you, John, so you can kind of kick things off here. So, uh, and that is that, is Volume 7 inspired only by the game modes or the games as a whole? Because uh, obviously there was a reference there on the, the roadmap that we talked about. And um, that was from uh, Why Hate on Civics was the, uh, the, the uh, Reddit username. So, yeah, yeah maybe you can see on, Why Hate on Civics indeed? Civics are awesome. Indeed. Um, yeah, so, yeah, as we said, for Volume 7, uh, we're going to be inspired by Underground. And, yeah, it is going to be more than just a game mode. We can't go into full details at the moment. But, um, as we'll probably say a thousand times throughout the course of these questions, we are celebrating 30 years of Need for Speed. Uh, we love the heritage that's come from Need for Speed. So, look out. There will probably be more in there than just game modes. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's the one thing you can kind of take from all these questions is that there is a... Uh... There is a lot of um, yeah, a lot of passion for this uh, for this series. That's for sure. Um, another question here. Um, I, again, I think this is for you, John, um, from Green Flame three six one, who said uh, a lot of people have a lot a lot of love for the old games, myself yeah. included. In Unbound, there were some great callback callbacks, such as having a, a noise bomb <clears throat> set of cosmetics. Do you have any plans to bring more throwback details like this to Unbound? Uh, yeah, so yeah, to, again, to kind of touch on the fact that we're 30 years in Eve Speed, um, and we really want to uh, celebrate that uh, across. So, again, we will look into ways in which we could do this. Um, yeah, you kind of bet, like, we want to explore as many ways as possible to be able to celebrate that across the year. So, um, again, not not full details, but definitely want to be able to explore that, and that's definitely a good avenue for us to go down. So. Yeah, basically, you got to keep an eye on our uh, on our channels to to get the full scoop because we want to keep some things a little bit under wraps for now to keep you guys excited yeah. for longer. 
Um, and then uh, another one here for you, John, as well. Another one on volume seven, too. So this is from um, Hargabt, which is G-A-B-T. Would you say that any differently? Hargabt, maybe? Hargabt. Uh, <laughs> the, so it says here, the roadmap mentions volume seven having drift and drag type modes. But since there are drift events in Lakeshore Online already, in what way would new advertised drift mode differ from the new one? Yeah, so... Um... You can, from the philosophy of what we're trying to run with Kaizen, so if you had a chance to look at it, jump on a blog and, and do have a look. We want to try out some new things. Uh, we say we're inspired by Underground. Uh, so you can bet that there's going to be uh, some changes in there to the existing game mode that we've already got in around Drift. This is going to be something that's got more depth, more mastery. And uh, yeah, without going into too much more details, it will definitely feel different. Cool, cool. All right, well, I'll throw this one to you now, Pat. Um... This is from Gore134. I'm just going to focus on you. Uh, there we go. Um, so what are the chances of getting more customization parts for existing cars and new wheels? And we had a lot of similar questions like this as well. So um, if you did ask a similar question, maybe uh, head back onto the thread and find the answer to this one as well. Um, it says here, a lot of older cars um, have a lot of aftermarket support today, which aren't featured in the game. So uh yeah content. yeah it's a great question um there are tons of cars out there now that do have a lot of great aftermarket support um and we see that a lot it's a tough balance for us um in this year between the new cars that we'll bring customization we'll bring on those plus anything else that we would do in the past um as my vehicle art director uh, very recently just told me sometimes we do sneak in a few um updates to some of the um, older cars, but I can't guarantee that we can do that um, for this um, period, for this year. Um, we'll keep looking at it and see if we can find opportunities for it, but it's definitely uh, a path that we want to look at um, when we start to consider what we might do next with Need for Speed, um, going back, looking at those cars, giving them a bit more of an update, adding more stuff to it makes perfect sense. Cool. And um, uh, Gore134 actually asked a few really good questions. I think that's why their comment got so many uh, upvotes as well. But um, here's a bit of a contentious one. This is one that uh, we had a few uh, other responses, uh, similar questions about, which is, what's the status of Toyota's relations with Need for Speed? Is there a possibility of Toyota coming back to Need for Speed in the near future? Classic. I love this question. <laughs> um, uh, but everyone wants to hear the answer to this question. Um, yeah, we love. I love Toyota. <laughs> we all do. We love Toyota and Toyota's past in Need for Speed. Um, the issue is, is um, we um, are always trying um, to find avenues where we can work together, um, and we haven't found that yet. Um, so we'll always keep trying. We'll keep doing it. But um, that's probably about as much as I can say, um, or I know before it goes into things that I'm not allowed to talk about or I shouldn't talk about. So there's no loss of love between the two companies, between us. Um, we just haven't found the right mix yet. Yeah, I think uh, everyone would probably agree with you there that there's a lot of love for Toyota, like both internally and externally as well. Um, John, I'm, I'm going to throw this last one from um, Gore over to you, uh, which is, can, can we see the return of Need for Speed Carbon style Canyon Jewels? Um, this is one of the best racing modes in Need for Speed, in my opinion. Fueling adrenaline really well. Racing alongside a cliff with super intense music and trying not to fly off. But uh, I don't recall seeing too many cliffs in Lakeshore. Yeah, uh, so it is a great question. And yeah, as you say, we, we love the old games too, right? So we're a little uh, light on canyons in Lakeshore. Um, but that's not to say uh, the kind of idea of an intense 1v1 event uh, is something that we couldn't explore. Um, definitely something that's been high up there on our list, our, um, our ever-growing backlog list. Um, but yeah, it's something that we could explore, the kind of nature of it. But obviously, canyons, carving canyons into Lakeshore, that would probably be a difficult one. But uh, yeah, we could see what we could do on the mode. Good answer. And um, uh, less of a question, this one, from uh, Vinod CR7. But it's, uh, please increase the server size from 16 to 32 players. Was that for me? Sorry. Yeah, it's pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I, I, gonna... I guess maybe to maybe to comment on uh, on just like the possibility of increasing server size from sixteen to thirty-two. 
Okay, right, we'll go we'll go in. Kaizen is all of, and our kind of year year two is all about being open and transparent, right? Remo moving our player count uh, from 16 to 32 is no mean feat, honestly, uh, in terms of like changing the infrastructure. Um, we hear it. We understand. We understand that people want to have more players uh, in online and play together. We do want to explore the opportunities to uh, do things like expanding party sizes and things like that. But honestly, like trying to change the infrastructure on a game that's live on a code base that we already have isn't going to be an easy one. Yeah, no, very honest answer. And that goes back to our whole transparency angle of this as well. And um, yeah, there were a couple of other questions similar to, similar to that in terms of party size as well. So I think your question kind of re like really reflects uh, that in general, really. Um, now, it's a really good one here. Um, uh, John, I'll keep you, uh, I'll keep you uh, highlighted for the time being, but um, I think this is one that you're probably going to take. But it, it's, uh, it's a really nice question with a bit of good sentiment behind it as well. So it says... Uh, and this is from uh, Spyros545 as well, which it says, Hi, thanks, guys. We really appreciate that you guys are giving Need for Speed Unbound more updates. A modern Need for Speed game hasn't gotten this much support in years. We also highly appreciate this new communication aspect between us players and you developers. My question is, will you guys still consider adding any updates to single player in the future volumes? Anything related to single player, as single player fans would love to see police AI improvements, more event variety in the calendar system, economy improvements, etc. Possibly even new game modes like drag could be incorporated into the grand. But uh, Pat, I, I think you were going to take this, weren't you? So, um, yeah. So it's a bit of a tricky one um, in terms of the game that we've already built. What um, we're intending to look at over this year of Kaizen is to really give uh, Need for Speed a strong live service that it's been due for a long time um but uh, a heck of a lot of need for speed players do play the single player story mode which we recognize we know that um so we're making adjustments to some things um that will help bring in uh single player players to feel a part of that live service um but i can't promise too many things that we could do too much in that area but we are looking at uh, where it makes sense and what we can do. Uh, and you'll see uh, the first part of that coming in Volume 6. Mm. Yeah, nice little teaser there for Volume 6 too. So, uh, yeah, take that what you will. And Pat, with you uh, still uh, highlighted here, I'll give you a couple of more questions so we're not flipping back between uh, you two too often. Um, the first one here is from... Uh, oh, it's a username I probably can't say on this uh, Discord channel without it being clipped and uh, taken completely out of context. But I think... Uh, the person who's asked the question has uh, will know who their, what their username is, so I won't be uh, reciting that back. But let's just say it starts with Eaton is the uh, first word. Um, and uh, the question is, um, I'm actually interested to know if you have any considerations for more user-generated user generated content, such as like a track editor. Um, they say, I feel like there are a lot of unused areas in the map in terms of events. I think this gives a sense of community, whoever has the most popular track or tracks. Can be featured in special playlists hypothetically yeah um that's a super good question um and um a hot topic as well quite a lot of people are doing a lot of stuff with ugc at the moment and you could argue we're not um really up there um with what they're doing it's something we're looking closely at it's something that we really want to focus on um when we think about what the future of need for speed might be uh, the difficulty is always adding a lot of those things into something that we already built that wasn't intended to have a lot of those um, particular elements. So I think it's a great, great thing. It's something we should keep talking about with the community, with all of you, on what uh, you mean by UGC and what you want to see for the future um, in Need for Speed. And it's a big one for us to, to look at and dive into in detail. Probably more so for next. I see people mention photo mode. Uh, potentially there's possibilities for us to look we know um we kind of didn't bring the level of photo mode that we had before um and that's tough um we recognize that one and we're sorry that that's not there in that way um we are looking um at what we can do in that but again i can't promise anything today necessarily on that one no, no, good answer. And, and yeah, great question as well. And um, another question here from Dark Halo 314, which is, will we get a patch in one of these seasons that will allow us to obtain and keep our garage 
Um, the uh, needs to be most wanted BMW M3 GTR in single player. I know that we can access it in game for one mission, but I'd like to keep it for use in single player free roam. I thought everyone was sick of the M3. Yeah, no one likes that car. Right? <laughs> yeah, no one wants it anymore. That's what I heard. Um, yes, interesting question. Um, that is probably a possibility of something we should think about. Maybe if that comes in a future volume. Maybe it doesn't. I'm not sure. I think it's a good idea. Maybe we should think about it. I th- I'd go uh, let us know. Do you want to see it? Do you not? Yeah, do you want to see it, or do you, are you sick of it? <laughs> All right, well, uh, and then there's one more question here from Dark Halo 314, then we'll hand it back over to you, John, which is, uh, what is your favourite or most memorable or memorable gl- bug slash glitch throughout Unbound's development? Nice question, that. Is that to me still? Yeah, that one's you for the time being, and then oh. the next one's John. Um... So I've worked a lot in cutscenes on the past on a lot of our games, um, and they bring the hilarious. There's always so much jank in some of the cutscenes that it's hard not to laugh um, at them. And I think some of the funniest ones are going to be, for me, there was one where Yaz points at uh, a load of racers inside of the meetup, and she says, like, that guy! And that guy we had at the particular time was pu- pulling a stupid pose. It was an animation from something else. just looks ridiculous. Um, that or when the skinning goes wrong and the faces turn inside out is always fun. Um, there's always fun to be had in cutscenes. Glitch Paradise. Yeah, Unbound Horror Update when? That sounds uh, traumatizing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, easy enough. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys saw actually uh, that uh, the, I think it was the uh, Hogwarts Legacy developers, they published a video which was like a bunch, it was like a super cut of a bunch of like awful awful glitches that they posted uh over the years so i think if you take a look at that you probably would uh probably be like oh yeah yeah that's uh that's something familiar on our game as well just uh, the the joys of development indeed yeah right. i mean one of the ones still see those right <laughs> i've played many games where i still see that <laughs> i remember yeah, yeah one I of the ones actually, that we actually ended up um shipping with and then we actually fixed was the one where we had a place in downtown where you could drive into a little coldy set. There was a there was a truck there, and if you drove into it at a certain angle, you got launched across the level. That was fun, um, fun but jank. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> some of these things slip through. But... All right, well, moving on. So we've got uh, a few questions here from uh, Lil Manaki. Um, again, probably butchered the name there, but you know these are Reddit names, not uh, you know. Not not proper names, I suppose. Uh, and the first question they've got here is: Would something on the lines of expanding upon the police, like a bounty system or a list of targets we can interact with and take down, be interesting to develop in the near future or as endgame material? It's a funny one because uh, the team will tell you that this is something that I go on about quite a lot. Um, so yeah, I love this idea. I love cops in general um, for Need for Speed. It's like one of our USPs, right? Um, yeah, I would say uh, we could see. We'll see what we could do uh, going forward in the future volumes. Obviously, we've got our inspired um, hop shoot uh, volume that we've got coming out and volume eight. Um, so yeah, never say never. And uh, yeah, I, I do love the idea of bounty hunters. There's something about like a specific, um, you know, additional cop level coming in and and bringing the pain. So and then you taking it to other people too. Yeah, good good suggestion for sure. Um, and then got another one here which is uh what would your thoughts be on a revamped takeover mode with a focus on crews and taking over sections of a city similar to carbon if one isn't in development yet yeah that's a super interesting one too um we've definitely talked about this a lot in the past the idea of crews in general and how you then weave crews into play at the same time i think again like putting something like crews into the game um for uh, unbound could you know it's be a potentially heavy lift but it doesn't say that we can't necessarily do something like a yeah uh, as the good su- suggestion is there utilizing link ups that we already have so there might be something around that we could do um and there's certainly we like the play of link ups and we want to see what we can do and expand that out into different ways so cool uh, and w- what are your thoughts on pink slip races i loved them <laughs> uh this this comes down to another piece of uh the transparency i guess is that 
Pink Slips in general is a core, right? The idea and the whole thing around Need for Speed is around risk reward. What's more risky than losing a car that you've belovedly spent a lot of time on? But therein lies the rub that if something was to go wrong with a pink slip race and then you lost that car and you felt like it was unjust, then that's bad times. Um, so, again, some way of us doing this system, some way of us having pink slips in, absolutely. Um, but we'd have to see if it's something that we could put uh, in for in for Kaizen. But by and large, pink slips, very cool. And a final question here from Lenny Malachy, uh, which was, uh, was Chicago the first choice for the inspiration of Lakeshore City? Uh, yeah, that's a good, good question, actually. Actually, um, one of the initial places we were looking at was Detroit. Um, but what we found with Detroit was actually it was kind of too flat um, and we didn't get the kind of undulation. There was a thing that we used for our development, which was uh, the term over under through. So you look for over under through opportunities within the world. Um, and we felt like there wasn't actually going to be enough of that. And then we looked at uh, Chicago. Chicago was great. Um, so, yeah, actually, great question. But, yeah, the initial one was Detroit. Cool. And then uh, one last question here for you, John, for the time being. Um, will the, and this is from uh, Smiling Menace 1420 uh, will the police AI be tweaked in single or multiplayer to be more challenging like in the older titles? I'm sure it's a, a relatively popular question that people would like answered. Yeah, absolutely. And again, as I say, we've kind of cops. Cops is so fundamental for us um, that, yeah, there's definitely something that we want to investigate, have been investigating. Um, so, yeah, without going into full details, um, the idea of cops being there and being punishing and you being able to have more fun, more play, more escape from them, definitely up, high up on our list. Cool. And actually, uh, there's another question here from Smiling Menace as well, uh, which you could probably take, John, which is, can we expect more rims along with additional body kits for existing vehicles? But obviously, we touched on that a little bit already. Yeah, and I think that on the body kit side, we, it's something that we've spoken about, you know, in the past and people are aware of, especially all of you guys, um, you know, being so invested, is that the way in which our body kits work and our parts work is that they have to be kind of handcrafted. You have to handcraft each of the parts so they connect together and they work well. So actually adding more in can, you know, be a time sink. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, as we said, we're kind of a small team. Um, so yeah, but on the rim side, could be an option. Uh, definitely could be an option for us. We just have to, again, as I say, kind of weigh up between creating cars and our, the work that our amazing car artists are currently doing, our vehicle artists are doing, uh, and they're doing there versus creating, uh, you know, customization like rims. So. Yeah, it's all about, all about that balance, really, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, actually, um, I'll, I'll throw this one to you to start with, John, but uh, Pat, you could probably answer this as well. But uh, the question here is, uh, what's your favorite muscle car out of the Need for Speed games? For, for, for example, uh, Corvette and Viper don't... Uh, oh, it says, FYI, Corvette and Viper don't count, despite what Carbon says. And that's from uh, Badger Lover 145. Why? I don't know. They yeah. made the rules. <laughs> This, so this is this might be an unpopular opinion. So who knows? Well, I do like a charger. Like so, you know, it's a bit popular. It's a bit like you know, obviously it's been used by a certain guy in a vest who likes to carry big wrenches around. But like it's uh, yeah, it's just cool. It's iconic, right? So that'd be my answer. What about you, Pat? I don't know. Could I be really controversial? And could I? Is a like can I? Is an M4 uh, a muscle car? Is is German muscle okay, or is that not okay? I mean, that's oh, controversial. That's definitely controversial. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that one. Maybe we'll. Uh, yeah, that's few people. There's, it's conflicting opinion in the chat by the looks of things. So uh, imagine that. Conflicting I, like to, I like to question reality. So you know. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave that. Uh, that's a good little mic drop there. Um, now uh, the wizard. Spelt wrong, might I add. Uh, maybe the wizard spelt correctly was, uh, you know, already taken as a username. Um, it says here, would uh, would you like to give us a hint about volume nine because the roadmap looks promising? Obviously, that's looking a little bit further into that uh, that roadmap. That's for you, Pat. Um, volume nine? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? Right? Having done volume there. six, yeah. yeah. Come on. Um, all I would say is. Um, to coin John, if you ever hang around with John for a bit, he'll talk about Kaizen a lot and how Kaizen's a great philosophy of improvement and step stones and step stoning and moving to something. So I would say if you want to know what volume nine is, then 
watch volume 6, volume 7, volume 8, and see how they build. Mm. That's all I'll say. Cryptic, but I like it. I like it. The real, the real secret is we don't actually know what it is yet. We have got oh, no oh okay. Yeah, I haven't worked out yet. <laughs> uh, another question here for you, Pat, <laughs> from, uh, <laughs> from uh, Diamond Master 07. Now, um, it's, actually, I could probably take half of this, uh, this question here, but um, actually, no, I will take the top half because we've already answered the second half, which was about the party size increase. But um, uh, the question was around uh, what primary platform we take feedback from, like community feedback. So, so I mean, you're in one already. The Discord channel is is something that like we're monitoring all the time. And um, whilst we not might not always be speaking all the time, we've got some brilliant mods in here that um, that are helping you guys out and trying to articulate some of your your guys' thoughts to to us. And then also EA answers as well. And then, uh, yeah, we've always got our eyes on on the social media channels too, including Reddit. So, um, and hopefully over the next kind of few weeks and months with Volume 2 kind of kicking it, um, not Volume 2, Year 2 kicking in, um, you'll, you'll start seeing uh, a little bit more responsiveness from us and, and more, um, you know, Pat you, uh, and John, you've both mentioned it, the transparency. So it's all about that, really. Uh, over the next few weeks and months, you'll see more of that. Um, John, I'll throw this one over to you now. Um, uh, one conspicuous, so I'm sure I'm probably assuming that was meant to say inconspicuous. Um, will there be any car performance balancing? I imagine that's throughout Kaizen. Yeah, so yeah. Um, to say, to say, there will be things coming that will be interesting to test out, but in terms of the actual balancing itself, if there are big issues, and you know, uh, we'll have spotted some issues before um, around uh, like the VW Golf, for example, right? So go ahead and fix that, that little rocket there. Um, if there are big things that are kind of like breaking the meta, uh, then let us know, and then we can try and get in and fix those. We really want to make sure that we're targeting the fix that matter to you guys most, um, because we can't do all the fixes uh, as a small team. We've got lots doing. We want to know, yeah, so raise them up. What are the big issues that are hitting you? And if there's something to do around a specific car's performance, then we'll jump on it. Sounds good. Um, and then another question here from uh, for you from El Polo Boy, uh, which is, would it be possible to have private lobbies in the game? Oh, is that for me too? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, again, something that we could explore. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of a matter of balancing everything that we've got going on at the moment. Um, again, we keep using the same answer, but you know, there's, there's, we, it's just a balance, really. It's just a balance between what we've got in development versus uh, what we can do. So, yeah. and as per Kaizen, like yeah. what we, oh, uh, is this, I said Kaizen again, so I have to take a shot now. Oh. But, um, <laughs> As yeah, as per that, we want to make sure that we're building upon it, and we want to make sure the biggest building blocks uh, that people have been asking for, we get in first, and then you know go from there. So. Cool. Um, and then uh, same same person, another question here, which is: uh, Can we get an improved wrap editor? We're missing skew mirror and the ability to change uh, choose a secondary color uh, for decals that have two sections, and um, they kind of go in a bit more detail here as well. But uh, they they reference something like Gran Turismo Seven having like uh, a really good wrap editor as well, but. Um, I know you guys touched on photo mode already and those kind of community features, so maybe touching on that a bit more. Yeah, um, you know, we love we love our wrap editor. We love what you can do in there, and we hear you. We hear that there's things in there which aren't up to spec of what you're after. Um, we've had some great feedback from our player council too uh, recently around it. Uh, I saw there was some some random guy called Pants in the uh, the chat is trying to say that he wants all of the source code. Can we delete him? Um, <laughs> But yeah, we we would love to like invest some more time in it, and yeah, like I say, I don't want to give the same answer, but it's just it's just a matter of balance balance between what we want to invest in. Um, so yeah, if there are some targeted things that people really want to have, then let's look at those. Let's see if we can then put those in. Um, but yeah, we we like wraps. Wraps are cool. Awesome. Um, and then uh, Pat, another one here for you. And uh, and actually, there's there's kind of two here that are probably linked together, so I can probably give you these two at the same time but maybe actually I'll, t I'll, get, I'll separate them out because obviously we've got to answer these questions independently which is another one from inconspicuous which is are there any plans to diversify the playlists more such as playing buena vista with s class cars or lakeshore express in b e class cars interesting um yeah we've touched on a little bit 
a couple of things. We've touched on server sizes. Um, we're touching on playlists uh, and what's in playlists and differences of choices. Um, I would say volume six has a lot to offer you is what I would say as the answer to that question. If you are frustrated by races and not being able to get into full lobbies, if you are wondering how playlists might get mixed up, how we might change it up, then I think volume six is probably what you're looking for. Okay, okay. And then uh, uh, w w this will be our last question for, for the day, just because we had so many and, uh, and there were a lot of duplicate ones. But um, for the time being, this will be our last one. And then obviously we'll look to do some more of these Q&As in the future as well. But um, it's a question for, here from... Uh, oh, are you Koki's lol, I think, is the uh, username. Um, and it says here, hey, Unbound team, are there any plans of adding a quick play matchmaking feature into multiplayer, such as speed list once had in Need for Speed 2015, however, not related to the lobby the player is in, meaning that finding a race with other players will be a matter of seconds and not lobby dependent. I think you uh, kind of touched on that a little bit there already, Pat. I did, damn. I can see him there. Are you cookies? Uh, are you cookies? Um, but it's... But it's are, are you cookies? cookies lol. His are you, are you cooking? If it was you and you asked the question, <laughs> I gave the answer before. Volume six is the place you want to go. Awesome, awesome. Right. Well, as I say, we'll we'll wrap it up for the time being. I, I mean, guys, is there anything? You, this is kind of you, the floor's open to you guys. If you want to, you know, maybe leave on a leave on a note from you guys. Maybe thanking the community. Totally up to you, Pat. I mean. We'll, we'll we'll pass on to you for the time being, but anything you want to say to, to end things out? Uh, yeah, I mean, from my side, I think this is great. I think I'll, the opportunity to come and answer some of your questions and maybe, you know, we didn't get to all of your questions and I know that sucks, but, you know, keep coming, keep coming with us and we'll try and be as transparent as we can be. Um, and over this year, we're really trying something different and we've engaged with the player council they will mention that to you last week you know a lot of people some people they're even in this chat i've seen them um we had a lot of good conversation with them and we're going to keep that conversation going uh and we want to keep this going because it's your game um and we want to build it and we want to build it in the right way for the future and that's kind of starting today uh, and starts very soon uh with a new update yeah, I think that that was the one thing that we've got out of the last kind of few weeks and since the announcement of uh, year two is that everyone just wants the best for Need for Speed and everyone wants the game to do well and to succeed and everyone just to have fun playing it. John, do you want to uh, do you want to mention anything else before we uh, round things off? Yeah, I think um, of being uh, I don't know slightly overwhelmed with the passion. Like uh, the passion's always there with Need for Speed fan base, right? But actually, just seeing the passion coming through for <laughs> the announcement of the timeline uh what we're doing with kaizen in general um what i love to see is just as well like the feedback coming in and it's positive and it's uh positive uh and well thought out feedback right that's what we love to see so keep that coming um and just to say yeah just a quick plus up and thank you to our uh player council they've been great um uh, we continue to engage with them um and really just like a big thanks as well to the team like we said um quite a small team the guys are really kicking butt um they're really working hard uh on bringing you cool stuff uh, over the course of the next year um so yeah be be patient uh, but also be excited please be excited i think someone else famous somebody does that right so maybe nintendo there's, we don't talk about <laughs> there's there's a lot of stuff to get excited about with uh with year two and um yeah i can't wait for people to kind of get their hands on it as well now uh guys obviously we'll wrap it up there um i hope everyone has a wonderful weekend and looks forward to what we have coming up over the next few weeks and months um if you did miss any of the questions that we answered today what we're going to do is we're going to transcribe this whole video this whole uh uh stream that we've done here and then we'll jump back into the original reddit post reply to those comments that um that that were well the questions that were asked um from from everyone and those that got answers and then we'll probably do a separate post as well just to kind of like you know put everything all in one go as well but yeah guys thank you so much for for you know joining us today for this and and hopefully we can see you again soon for uh for another one bye bye bye, -bye. bye. bye. bye.